hinges cannot be formed therefore we cannot use redistribution of movement in continuous uh, beams multiple span continuous beams so you should not try to use or uh, apply movement redistribution to beams continuous beams or other statically indeterminate structures with reinforced with frp and it doesn't mean you cannot like you cannot use frp uh, FRP strength in compression in any way or form <coughs> in your design. You cannot do that. We talked about, at least we mentioned it 25 times in the last three days. But if, if the bars happen to be in compression area, that's okay. They can remain there without considering the contribution from FRP reinforcement in compression, which is considered to be very, very small. And of course, uh, uh, ACI tells us don't use FRP bars in compression areas by design. So we have two simple, very, very simple beam design uh, examples, okay? So you will probably be able to design this, uh, the many beams just by using these two examples. That's quite possible. If you develop a small spreadsheet, with all the uh, limits and everything, it is very, very handy. So I have spreadsheets, but they are all in KSI units. That's the reason I'm not able to share that with you. But if you, are, if you don't mind the KSI units, I can forward it to you. I don't have any, you know, I can <coughs> always share that with you. So <clears throat> now, uh, in this beam design, the problem statement, it says the width is about 177.8 millimeter. Uh, depth is uh, 305, that's overall height, reinforced with two FRP bars with designation G number 6. G number 6 is glass number 6 bar, F100 E6. So what do we understand from this designation? G, G for glass, right? Number 6 is for number 6 bar, which is 3 fourth of an inch, which is 3 fourth times probably around 16 millimeters or something. Yeah, uh, close to uh, 18 or something. Um, <coughs> I, I, I have it somewhere. Um, and then that's G number six. F100 is the uh, strength is 100. Guaranteed strength is 100. E6 means modulus of 6 million PSI, 6 million PSI. Okay, so we'll convert that to MPA. I have it, have the numbers here. And then you assume that we also need an environmental reduction factor, environmental reduction factor, which is C sub E, right? C sub E is 0.8. And that's for condition where the concrete is not exposed to earth or weather, but it's for glass fiber. Therefore, C sub E is 0.8. The effective concrete cover to the center of the uh, FRP bars is 1.19, 30.23 millimeter, and the compressive strength is 34.48 MPa. So with this information, we should be able to find out the movement strength. That's my goal. I'm trying to find out the movement strength with this kind of dimensions, and two of these bars with a, a tensile strength of 100 KSI and modulus of 6 MSI. So I converted those into MPA units so we can understand better. So bar size is number six. So area of the bar is 0.44 square inch each one. So two of them is 0.88 and that will work out to be 567.7 millimeter square. So FFU star, FFU star, which is the guaranteed tensile strength is of course given as F100, that means 100 KSI which is 689.5 MPa. It's about one and a half times the normal steel we use in industry. So EF is 6 MSI, which is 6,000 KSI. That will work out to be 41.37 GPa. These are, these are real numbers. If you see the um, data sheets for the glass uh, FRP bars I presented for Aslan and our friend's uh, table, it's about 
40, 40.1.37 GPA, right? That's relatively common number. F prime C is 35.5 MPA. So with that, we can quickly calculate our uh, <coughs> FFU, which is the design tensile strength, 552 MPA. So design strength is based on C sub E. So C sub E times FFU star, FFU star is 100 KSI times 0.8 will give you 80 KSI, which is nothing but 551.6. Epsilon FU star is 0 0.018. So Epsilon FU is CE, I'm just reading it, don't mind, but this is CE times Epsilon FU star. So that works out to 0 0.0144 inch per inch. Remember beta 1 is the one factor that relates the depth of the compression block with the depth to neutral axis. That's in ACI. So all these are consistent with ACI. So beta 1 needs to be calculated. It works out to be 0.8 based on this expression. And also we have a, uh, we have a table somewhere. If you remember, we have had a table here. Yeah, this one here. See this table? So about 35.5 is close to 0.8. So beta 1 is 0.8. So beta 1 is 0.8 for F prime C of 5000. Uh, effective depth is 274 millimeter. Rho F is FRP reinforcement ratio. The definition of Rho F is area of fiber uh, bars, FRP bars over B times D. So that's equal to 0 0.01163. Okay. Now for balanced FRP, remember our starting point is we need to first find out the balanced uh, FRP reinforcement ratio. So that's what we did in the next step. So use the expression for balanced condition. These are all, cons if you use consistent units, they're just ratio of F prime C to F F U. Use MPA units, KSI units, it doesn't matter which one you use. EF, again, in consistent units will give you uh, either KSI, uh, you can use KSI or MPA units. So that's also a ratio, therefore, it will have no effect on your um, which units you use. Don't, it doesn't matter. So once I plug in those numbers, I get rho FB is 0 0.00781. Very, very small. Very small. So if my <coughs> rho FB is 0 0.00781, what is area of FRP under balanced condition? this times B times D. There is a subscript W that is for uh, T beams. So the stem width, stem width is BW, width of the web, W for web. So 0 0.00781 times whatever is the width times the depth will give you 380.6 square, uh, square millimeter. I also need 1.4 rho FB. Remember the transition, it is This one here. So for finding out phi factor, my transition is this point here where I have 1.4 rho FB. So if my rho is greater than or equal to 1.4 rho FB, then I can use phi factor 0.65, right? Are you all tired? Say that again. How will we control the threshing of concrete in compression zone in case of over reinforced design section? We don't control. We say once the strain reaches a value of 0 0.003, that's the limit. That's it. So theoretically, we are saying once the strain in concrete is 0 0.003, that is considered to have failed by compression. We restrict the strain in compression by 0.035. Yeah, 0 0.0035. That's right. That's exactly right. 
Uh, the maximum movement is likely to be away from the support, right? So you have adequate development length from the location of maximum movement to the support. That is for shear. Double action is for shear. We'll talk about it tomorrow. But why do I need larger bond at the support? Right, but your maximum movement is away from the support. So if you have adequate bond length or development length between the location of maximum movement and support, assuming it's a simply support with zero movement, that is adequate. You know what I'm saying? So you have adequate length for development between the maximum location of maximum movement and the support location where the movement is zero. So right, right. But if you have point of uh, if you have point of contraflexion. Only then you do that. In normal, simply supported beams, you don't want to extend your bars beyond the support length, uh, support location by a development length. That's not needed. Uh, are, are you with me? But we are providing an actual design. That's not needed. That's not needed. No. So we are just the extra That's right. There is one detailing requirement where it says I think about 30% or 40% of the bars need to be continued into the support. That's it. You don't have, if you can turn on the lights. I, I don't know if others are following what the question is. Uh, let's say this is a beam. The question is, uh, <clears throat> Uh, in your detailing, in your detailing, um, we are saying the development length needs to be extended beyond the support. That's what you are saying, right? That's what you are saying, I am assuming. My point is, my, if it is a uniformly loaded beam, then you have bending moment diagram, something like this. And the maximum movement is here, so I need to develop my <coughs> full. I need to develop fully at this point here, so that if this distance is whatever the distance, if distance distance is greater than the development length, I'm good at this point. So at this point, this is my bending moment, and the corresponding development length for this movement is if it is less than this distance we are good at this point and at this point theoretically the movement is zero that means i don't need any stress in the bar right therefore you really don't have to develop beyond here you just uh, you don't need that in If you so need proper anchorage, if we are not providing, mm. then we will be diagonal compression. Okay. Yeah, that's a detailing issue, of course. Yeah. You have to look at it uh, case by case, case by case. Yeah. But yeah, yeah uh, that's case by case, and in most cases, you probably won't need a development length beyond this. Because development length is uh, based on the bar stress. And the bar stress is zero at that location. That means theoretically you don't need any development length beyond that point. It's a good detailing practice to have some kind of some, not all. Some of the reinforcing bars can go up or something like that. They can be bent like this. But you don't have to bend every single one of them. 
in fact for continuous beams in continuous beams you will see in continuous beams we normally do this that is the detailing for continuous beams we do not really do not even have to do yes that is right that is right not all not all exactly that is the reason that you do not continue every single bar yes You may have to do that in FRP bars. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. To reduce the uh, development. Yes. Okay. So, does it make sense? Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I need that 1.4 rho FB, so which is equal to 0 0.0109. Uh, so, my actual rho F is 0 0.01163 this is 0 0.0193 so this is greater than 1.4 rho fb therefore my fee factor can be 0 0.65 <coughs> are you with me did i lose you in between so rho f is greater than 1.4 rho fb and therefore i can go back to this uh, figure my rho f is somewhere here Therefore, my fee factor is 0 0.65. Okay. So, it is considered to be over reinforced and we need to find out FF. So, this is a long equation. Just plug in the numbers, compare uh, uh, the numbers that you have in this equ equation for FF and that gives you FF equals 64.1 KSI. Our FFU is 100 KSI, but we are only getting a 64.1. What it means is, even though we have larger strength in our FRP bars, because of strain compatibility, we are only able to utilize 64 KSI or 442 MPA instead of how much is that? 100 times 68 point something, right? 6, 690 or 685, something like that. So, in KSI unit, this was 100. That was round number, 100 KSI. But FF is 64.1. So, we have higher strength, but we are really not able to utilize it because of compatibility. So, that is where you can, you may have higher strength, but we are not able to utilize all the strength because we are always designing our section to be over reinforced section. Okay, now, we, now that we have FF, we can find out M sub N. So, which is rho F times FF times 1 minus 0 0.59 rho F FF over F prime C and then BD square, that is it. So, use consistent units, you should get MN equals 62.84. Any questions on this? Very straightforward, right? The other approach is you can always find out the depth of the compression block by using equilibrium condition. So, by using that equilibrium, total tensile force is AF times FF, total tensile force, and we calculated FF to be 64 point or 442 MPA. So, plug in those numbers and the total compressive force is 0.85 F prime C B times A. So, plug in the numbers, you get your A depth of the compression block is 48.26. Then C is based on beta 1 because A equals beta 1 times C. So, that works out to be 60.2 and C 